the world You step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Home for a life spent with you Here I am to worship Thank you. 
praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Bless 
as high as the sky is above the earth. So high above our ways, the ways of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is still. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, brothers and sisters. You might have heard being announced or mentioned regarding a missionary priest who is coming to preach about the missions that priest is the one standing and smiling in front of you now. My name is Father Freddy Pinuela. In fact, a brother priest was supposed to come last February, but the schedule was canceled because he got a COVID. But thanks to Father Eric for scheduling it this weekend. The rest of the information will come during my homily and sharing. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offer yourself on the cross, that in the blood and water flowing from your side, and through your death and resurrection, the church might be born. Blessed be God. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, for your anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of Jordan, so that we might all be baptized in you. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. You called your children to this cleansing water that they may share in the faith of your church and eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, lead them to a new and spiritual birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I'm singing, come sweet walk, cleanse my soul. Shower me and make me whole. Consume me with the healing flood. Leave no traces of a person I was. Before the river came. Before the river came.
May Almighty God cleanse of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. God, you relieve me when I am in distress. 
cross Have pity on me And hear my the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. Oh, Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, Bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. 
And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning. What a beautiful day. My full name is Father Freddy Pinuela, but you can just call me Father Fred for short. That's besides the fact that I'm short. I haven't seen Father Eric, but I'm sure I am much smaller than him. And even Father Joseph is much taller than me. Just like Father Joseph, I'm from the Philippines. And I belong to a religious missionary order called MJ, which means Missionaries of Jesus and not Michael Jackson. <laughs> I am currently assigned in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles since January of last year. The MJ, or Missionaries of Jesus, was founded in 2002 by 41 priests and brothers moved by the goal to reach out to our brothers and sisters in the frontier situations, or as what Pope Francis referred to as the peripheries. We were inspired by Jesus, the incarnate word, who reached out to the least the last and the lost. Prior to the founding of MJ, most of us 41 members were already missionaries in different mission countries. As like, for, like me, I was already a missionary in Senegal, West Africa for 10 years. And I can tell you that missionary life is difficult, challenging, but fulfilling, difficult because it is always difficult to leave one's family and one's country and one's comfort zone and journey to an unknown land whose culture, language is different from mine. Challenging in the sense that I had endured a lot of sickness, like malaria. And I had to learn two languages almost at the same time. Senegal was under French colonies. I had to pass by Belgium together with six other companions to study French. Are there anyone, are there some of you here who speak French? Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? After the Mass, we can speak together. Then after six months, after I arrived in Senegal, I had to study again the local language, the Wolof. So you imagine how challenging is that, studying two languages almost at the same time. But fulfilling, 
Because once a missionary knows us to speak the language of the people, he can communicate, he can celebrate Mass, and it's less expensive. You know what I mean by less expensive? After studying the local language for a little bit more than six weeks, I was able to understand it and speak a bit of it. So I had full of you know, courage. I went to the market to buy a shirt. When I asked the vendor, how much does this shirt cost? He looked at me, of course he looked at my skin, and he said, that's 100 bucks. Oh, that's too expensive, I protested. But when I started speaking the local language, he was amazed. He looked at me with a grin on his face and he said, oh, you speak our language, you're from here. Here, it's 10 bucks. <laughs> See what I mean by less expensive? The MJ has missions in Papua New Guinea, in Guatemala, in LA, where I'm assigned, we have twin parish there, in the Diocese of Brownsville in Texas, in the Philippines, and lately, about three years ago, we have started our presence in Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is under the communist regime, but despite that, Catholicism is flourishing. They have a lot of vocations, and they say, thanks to the blood of the martyrs, those who were killed during the occupations of communist regime, Catholicism and the church continue to flourish. In all these missions that we have, we opted to work with the poor. We have two missions in the peripheries of Manila, among the urban poor, the slum dwellers, and a community of relocated people. These are the people who are the victims of the previous super typhoon, Haiyan, that devastated the nation. Many families lost their homes, their houses, and members of the family. And these people are relocated there and we are serving them. We also work with the migrants and migrant communities in our Paris in the border between Mexico and Texas. We also work for the interreligious dialogue. We have two parishes and two schools among the Muslim majority population in the southern part of the Philippines. For we believe that despite the difference of religion, we can work and collaborate together to promote peace and well-being. The Muslims and other religions, uh, people, also believe in God, and we can work together for peace. Lastly, we work with the indigenous communities. We accompany them, promoting their dignity and identity as a people. Well, I have so many things to share regarding all these missions that we have and so many needs to bring before you. But allow me just to speak to you of our mission work, which is our priority, especially the, on this time of pandemic. Our work and presence among the urban poor, the slum dwellers, and the relocated communities in the periphery of Manila. They comprise the majority of our parishioners, and most of them are daily wage earners, small-time fishermen, vendors, small-time drivers of public transportations, and scavengers in some dump sites there in the periphery of Manila. In the past, they were the most neglected communities, not only by the government, but also by the church. Their pastor before would only visit them once a year and celebrate Mass during their patronal feast day. When our team of MG priests came there, they were happy and regained their hope. 
They rejoice not only because they now have regular schedule of masses, but because they feel and are affirmed that they are also part of the church with the priests present in their midst, accompanying them in the struggle for life amidst poverty, in their search for dignity, security, and spiritual upliftment. Prior to the pandemic, our team of MG priests serving there accompany and comfort them, especially when they lost a member of members of their family due to the extrajudicial killings, an outcome of the campaign against drugs by our president, Duterte, whereby a lot of suspected drug dealers and users, including innocent people, are executed, shot dead, at point blank, without due process. And it is really very difficult for our for us missionary priests, when we priests become objects of surveillance and death threats for helping and accompanying these poor, poor victims. The most challenging and difficult part of our pastoral and mission work is during this time of pandemic. When the government of the Philippines declared a lockdown last March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many of our poor parishioners, if not all, suffered hunger. Majority of these families with five or more members depend only on a daily wage earning drivers, vendors, fishermen, and scavengers. With lockdown, general quarantine, or enhanced community quarantine, they are not allowed to go out of their houses, so they could not go to work. Without work, they have no money. And without money, they have no food. And no food, they are hungry, and they can die. Many cried out, we will not die of virus, but soon we will die of hunger. And so, brothers and sisters, this pandemic has affected all of us globally, everywhere. There is this COVID-19 who has killed a lot. But during this time of pandemic crisis, they are the poorest of the poor who are greatly affected Many would go to the parish asking for food. We are aware of the sufferings and need. Our team of priests there and parish collaborators organized a food donation campaign. They knock at every door of friends, benefactors, and persons of generous heart to ask for food sacks of rice, canned goods, and noodles. And with the grace of God, many responded, bringing packs, sacks, truckloads of rice, and canned goods. And with the help of our parish leaders and collaborators, together with our seminarians, these are distribu were distributed to as many families as we could. However, this pandemic will not be over that soon. And the need to feed the hungry goes on. Their urgent need is basic, food for survival. Here in the U.S., the government has allotted a stimulus subsidy of $2,000. Did you receive it already? In the Philippines, the government allotted a bit more than $100 for each family, just enough to buy three sacks of rice, enough for a family of five to survive for less than a month. You know, they can buy with $1 equivalent in peso, two pounds of rice, and they can buy dried fish or one small can 
of sardines. And it's already a simple meal for them to survive. And that is why despite this pandemic, despite the fear of traveling, I had been in Minnesota last August. Here last February, I preached to two parishes and now I have come back here again to preach to you, to ask for your solidarity. So whatever help you may share counts a lot for the survival of this, these poor families. I believe that in our gospel today, Jesus asked the disciples to look into his hands and his feet, scarred with the mark of the nails, to be able to know that the resurrected Christ is the one who suffered, and to be able to follow him and welcome him. We also need to welcome those brothers and sisters of ours who are suffering. They are the images of Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you in advance for your generosity. We, after the uh, communion, we have our second collection. And I plead for your solidarity in behalf of these people. I have nothing. I have only a pen. If you have your check, I have a pen that would go together. <laughs> Thank you in advance for your generosity and may God bless you all. Amen. Dear brethren, let us. Good morning. Uh, my name is Drew Clements. I am a current Grand Knight for Casey Council 13397. We have the honor to award two youth of our parish, uh, one for a Keep Christ in Christmas and <clears throat> uh, essay contest winner. Our presenters are going to be Father Joe, Mr. Frank Chase, who is the Homer Thibodeau uh, Diocese Administrator, and also Dean Mathern, who is uh, our District Deputy. So first we have Mason Hogan. Come up, bud. Mason actually won uh, first place with the council for the Keep Christ in Christmas uh, display and the posters that they created. He actually went on to the diocesan level won first place and went to state and won uh, second place. So he's being awarded a trophy and a $100 check. Our second awardee is Miss Abigail DeRose. She actually uh, entered into our Casey Council 13397 essay contest, and she is being awarded for winning it. She actually is getting a $500 scholarship as well. Thank y'all very much, and I, while I'm up here, I want to take the opportunity to thank the parish for making our chicken dinner, which was last weekend, a very success. Uh, we have these events to be able to award and do for the parish, so if you're interested in joining the Knights, speak to one of the Knights that are here today. Thank you very much.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of the holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we hear his word in the scriptures, our hearts burn within us with a longing for God's presence. With this Easter hope, let us express our needs in prayer. That those who teach in the church will remain faithful to the gospel of repentance and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. That leaders of the church, government, and industry will work together to provide food, employment, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who are dying may know the peace of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Let us also offer to the Lord our personal intentions for our sick brothers and sisters, special projects or events. Let us pray to the Lord that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to grant these prayers to your recent Son, the glorious Prince of life, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. Thank you. 
sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and bring from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death of love and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with St. Genevieve, who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merits be co heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for life everlasting. Amen. For those joining us on social media, please pray with me in active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Bring the bread and wine. 
Oh, 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I would like to thank you in the name of my congregation, the Missionaries of Jesus, and the people we are serving in the missions. I thank you for your generosity. Special thanks, especially for the Missionary Cooperative Plan of this diocese, who always accepts us and give us parishes wherein we can preach our missions. And thank also to our pastor, Father Eric Lible, who rescheduled our mission uh, sharing here in your parish. And to Father Joseph, who welcomed me when I arrived here last Thursday. And to also Justin, who received my call. And to all of you for your generosity. And continue to pray for us, missionaries of Jesus. And to all missionaries working around the world and the people we are serving. Thank you very much. And if you are interested in our works as missionaries of Jesus, you can just browse in the internet, www.missionariesofjesus.com. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Together. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday to all of you. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let the song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing an alleluia.